It's a new election, folks, and these teach us a lot about people. And that especially happened in 2016, when we had one of the most unexpected results in the history of our country. There have been a lot of guesses about why people voted the way they did, but not a lot of people have seemed to focus on why the actual polls and predictions were so wrong. And that's what I'd like to talk about today, because I think the actual answer is important for understanding not only what might happen in this next election, but also some parts of human nature that we might not understand. Now, mathematics and computers have given us amazing things, so we put a lot of faith into them, and the people who use them, especially because their results seem objective. But they aren't always. This is because every mathematical model or computer program depends on what information is put into it at the beginning, how it's set up, or what numbers or information it starts with. And this is done by people. And so, those people's opinions and tendencies can sneak their way into the programs. And I think that exactly was the Achilles heel of the election predictions in 2016, including ones by the supposed smartest and best people we had. And the same thing can happen in 2020. So, let's talk about it. Politics deals with some of the most basic parts of people's worldviews, so discussions about it can almost never be objective. But the 2016 U.S. election featured a candidate who used controversy to get press coverage. And so he ended up in a lot of personal fights, and he attacked people's worldviews more than we've ever seen before. And the tone of the discussion caused a lot of people to view him as a bad person in a lot of ways. His personality is developed over time to be what gets him the most attention, so it's hard to tell how much of it is his real self, but a lot of people did take it that way and felt that he was showing a lot of qualities that should not cause a person to succeed. And that has a very specific effect on our minds, though we might not realize what it is. And that's what I want to focus on. If you watched the propaganda series here, you've got an idea where this is going. But here, we're taking a step further. Because we've evolved to exist in groups, since we need other people to have children, and sharing work makes more for all of us. But in those situations, there's a key issue. We can't always evenly divide the food or shelter or mates, so we have to decide who gets the first choice. And the way we came to do that is to give the most to the people who give us the most. The best ideas, the best children, who can bring back the most food or defend us the best. Because we all benefit if they're healthy and happy. You can join my camp and have all the meat you want! And likewise, if we run out of things and someone has to go hungry, stay outside or be left alone, the person at the bottom, the person who we think gives us the least, is the one who loses out. This means that what other people think of us is not a shallow thing. It's a matter of life and death. Because it's been said that evolution is the survival of the fittest or of those most adaptable to change. But here it's the survival of those who look the fittest those who appear that way to everyone else. And that is how we actually work. Just like we need to eat or breathe, we naturally protect our reputation in our group, above other things. And this is what came into play in 2016. You see, Donald Trump, for publicity or other reasons, spoke plainly and started a lot of fights. And in doing so, he looked to a lot of people like he was going to gain leadership in their group and go against the basic ideas that they use in their reasoning, and destroy their personal reputations. And he also seemed not fit enough to hold the position, all of which were grave threats to those people's survival. Outside of the Civil War, World War II, and including 9-11, this may be the most cataclysmic event the country's ever seen. And that basic survival instinct triggered in all those people who were against Donald Trump. And it doesn't matter if those people were smart, or rich, or well-known. That instinct is there at all times in all of us. It's actually one of the first things we develop. And when that basic aspect of ourselves is threatened, we cannot be objective. And that's what happened to the models and polling. Giving a candidate a good percentage chance of winning helps that person's reputation, and thus would hurt the survival chances of the people making those polls. Excuse me. What were you whistling? No, it was Wagner, one of the great anti-Semites of the world. So in that case, it could not be done. They could not help him in any way. I wanted so desperately for him not to win that I started playing mind games on myself as well. But when they did this, they didn't make it obvious. Because there's one more part of this, which is that our reputation also depends on whether people think we're honest. 
So when it comes to someone we don't like, we'll instinctively find ways to harm them while still looking honest and fair-minded to others and to ourselves. That's why the polling looked so weird and one-sided and why there were those long and complicated attempts to justify it that actually hid some very simple slanted things. So, regardless of whether we think the election was interfered in or not, or whether we like the candidates or not, these polls and models, by nature of the situation, could not have given us accurate information. And now, we have a new election, with the same candidate. But will we see the same thing? Not necessarily. There's a very good chance that the same sites and experts will be much more accurate this time. But it's not because they learned their lesson. These are hard-coded things that can't be turned off. Instead, we might get better results because the situation itself is different. Since the people doing this work were really embarrassed in 2016, and everyone else saw it happen, this means that now they have two threats to their reputation to avoid. The threat of Donald Trump winning again, and the threat of looking foolish or dishonest to everyone else by making bad predictions. And since there's less to lose by another Trump term, it's likely that they're going to lean towards protecting their reputation by this time being much more careful with their predictions. And this is how our minds actually process situations. We track and protect our reputation, and we can only be fair and objective when it isn't in danger. Very often, this involves multiple things, like when we have to balance the threat of looking dishonest or unintelligent with the threat of helping someone who threatens us in other ways, which is exactly what we've seen here. And likewise, we often have to balance having an interaction with a person we don't want with hurting how the person sees us. I can't afford professional movers. I'm moving myself this Saturday. Which is one example of what we call an awkward situation. There's actually a part of our mind that is always tracking things like this. And when it detects a threat, we'll overrule our other actions. Okay, your turn. Go ahead, cry. No! Cry! No! And instead, it will make us defend that reputation by trying to look smart again, minimizing the mistake. I thought you said you were going to beat him. I'm out of shape, that's the reason. Or even punishing the person that damaged our reputation. But when we do that, we do it in a way that doesn't hurt our reputation otherwise. We use the gray area, the wiggle room, so no one can prove that we were being unfair. He had threatened one of our officials. We were not going to give Alan Iverson any um, marginal place to the basket. And you can see these things constantly in all of our interactions, no matter who or how much money might be involved. But the league is controlled by egos. The best way to understand it, I think, is to see that our intellect, our conscious mind, is not actually the owner of our bodies. Our genes are. And we're like an employee who's hired to help them fulfill their own purpose, which is to survive and be spread. And there's a manager in the room at all times who outranks us, keeps us within those limits, and who can overrule what we're doing if we go outside of them. My dad loved fishing, but mostly I can't do a deal with you because you thought I was Polish in that creation. So, <laughs> We'll be able to learn more about this in this election season, and we'll talk more about this stuff in the future here. For now, thanks for listening, share this video if you like it, and I'll see you soon.